I am Kundi Prake. I am principal of uh, one of the larger centers for adult education in Flanders, in the Antwerp region. We are a school catering to students age 16 and up, uh, but typically we were looking at a demographic profile with a sort of a peak around 30-35 years old. We're a fairly large uh, school, we have 7,500 students and we offer about about a thousand courses every year ranging from 20 to 200 uh, teaching hours. Our population in Antwerp is quite diverse. Um, we have a lot of immigrants, about half of our students are immigrants and what we try to do is offer them a trajectory starting with Dutch as a second language and then leading towards um, second chance to learn, so that's the equivalent of a diploma of secondary education but then for adults, um, but also the level of higher professional education. As I mentioned before, we used to have a student profile uh, with a nice Gaussian curve with a peak around 30-35 years old, but what we noticed recently is that that curve is slowly transforming into a bimodal curve where on the one hand we have younger students, on the other hand we have increasingly older students. And the later is not a surprise, doesn't come as a surprise, because that really fits the trend of an aging society, um, meaning that people also will have to stay active longer, they need formal qualifications longer than before, and so they participate more in um, adult education, in formal adult education. Our challenge is to make sure that we offer programs that really contribute to uh, how people can stay active on the labor market longer than before. And that's quite a challenge because there are some differences, uh, some important differences between, let's say, an 18-year-old dropout looking for a first employment and someone who has been employed for several years uh, and is now looking at sort of a meaningful uh, way to stay active longer. There is an expected increase of older people, 65 and over, from 16.7% in 2006 to close to 30% by 2050, so that's 13.3 percentage points increase. At the same time, we are experiencing a decrease of younger people, a decline from 30 percent of the total population under 25 to 23 percent in 2050. And what this amounts to is on the one hand a reduction and at the same time an aging of the working age population and this translates into a shortage of specialists. Workers beyond the traditional age of retirement are increasingly in demand and as providers of adult education we need to play an um, important role into um, meeting that demand of the labor market. When we look at the results of that shift in the demographic uh, constitution of the labor force uh, we need to understand that we are not just adding uh, older workers to a labor force, but that this has an effect on the total system. Um, involving older workers has effects beyond just solving a shortage uh, problem. There are some real benefits to a combination of younger and older workers in the workplace. First of all, there is a better integration of long-term and short-term goals. Uh, each age group comes with their own perspective on uh, goals. The combination also leads to a better integration of possible actions. There's actually a larger repertoire of possible actions. Um, older people bring, older workers bring well-tested strategies to the workplace, while um, younger people are really better at ad hoc experimental approaches. And combining them really leads to a more efficient uh, workplace. There's a greater sensitivity to the effect of actions due to enhanced pattern recognition. Patterns can only be recognized when you look at them over a sufficiently long period of time. And 
um, older workers typically have the ability to look back and, rec and see patterns, recognize patterns, which younger workers cannot uh, really do. And finally, there's a wider range of mental models. Deep and narrow models are better combined with broad and shallow models. What we need to do is to, to uh, define approaches at different levels of organization. At the macro level, we need employment uh, strategies which facilitate older workers and make it easier for organizations to have older workers as part of their uh, workforce. On the micro level, we need further um, education and training for older workers to be able to maintain their professional skills and contribute to um, output on the labor market. To do so, we need to leave behind a traditional um, and perhaps somewhat intuitive model of a decreasing intelligence um, related to advanced aging. We need to do that for two reasons. First of all, performance is primarily related to the individual learning biography and not to the biological age. And on the other hand, uh, we have some fairly good models uh, differentiating different types of intelligence and perhaps not a very recent model but still a very powerful one uh, is the model, the theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence as it was formulated by Horn and Cattell. Fluid intelligence is mainly the ability to find meaning in confusion and to solve new problems. And yes, that's an ability that seems to decrease um, let's say from the age of 30 on. But crystallized intelligence on the other hand is the ability to use skills and knowledge and past experiences and that's an ability that remains stable as one gets older and possibly even increases under the right circumstances. So basically when we are looking at the relationship between formal education and um, the labor market we have uh, a context in which we know that we need to make a distinction between age-stable and age-variable uh, factors. Now from this some important, important conclusions about the way older people learn can be drawn and can be used towards uh, activating older workers as older learners. So what do we know about learning at advanced age? So which are the variables which we need to take into account, which we need to consider when we look at how we can um, have older workers participate in formal education. First of all, there is a high sensitivity to interference. Older people, people are more sensitive to things happening which do not really relate to um, the subject at hand. This relates to, let's say, the setting of a traditional classroom. I mean, if things go on which detract from the actual learning process, that will have a negative effect on the learning that goes on. Uh, but it also relates to, let's say, the overall organization of their life. They need to be able to focus on the learning process itself. This comes with a, a relatively high importance um, of learning motivation and a clear purpose uh, of the learning. Even though older people will sometimes indicate that they like to learn because they want to keep their uh, mind sure, sharp, even that is sort of a clear purpose for learning. Of course when we are looking at how to combine formal learning and a sustained participation in the labor f in the labor market that by itself should be clear as a learning purpose. The teaching itself of course also needs to be uh, considered. Teaching at a high speed can lead to cognitive congestion. So it is fairly important that teachers who work with older learners, who work with older students, know about uh, a number of specifics in terms of changing their teaching style, in terms of uh, changing how they function in the classroom.
the learning activity is crucial. The more learning activities are connected with action, the better the results we can expect. Older people learn more easily in larger chunks. They prefer larger chunks over little segments. So it's quite important for teachers to understand that they need to adopt um, what we could refer to as a holistic approach uh, to teaching. They also need to make sure that the structure of the knowledge, sort of the knowledge taxonomy is clear because that supports learning uh, processes at advanced age. We know that older learners are less aware of uh, modern or recent uh, study techniques and the use of ICT as part of a sustained self-directed learning process. So there needs to be uh, an introduction to those techniques and to uh, modern technology before we can expect that that will um, bring about a meaningful contribution to the learning process. Now, we can also look at work performance at advanced age. Um, work performance is really something different from a general mental performance. Um, there is a strong connection between work performance and experience. Uh, continuous above average work performance requires extensive experience. Um, on average you need about 10 years of experience before you can uh, refer to yourself as an expert in any given field. Um, so it's really sort of the duration of your experience that contributes to the level of your expertise and not just uh, a general mental performance related to age. There is also a connection between work performance and working conditions and the type of work. There is the concept of work-induced aging. Um, tasks with no or fewer uh, learning requirements can lead to a degeneration of skills with a negative aging trend while tasks involving uh, advanced learning requirements can actually um, decelerate the aging process and contribute to an active uh, participation. Studies about work performance related to different types of working uh, indicate that um, people who are self-employed, for example, tend to age uh, less rapidly. Um, their work performance stays uh, higher um, for a longer time, uh, primarily because their work involves a wide range of situations in which new challenges um, come about all the time and this sort of contributes positively to an active uh, aging. So both mental and work performance are strongly correlated with experience. Mental performance depends on the individual learning biography, the experience, which is built upon uh, learning and life experiences, and work performance depends on sufficient uh, expertise which relates to work experience. So from a systems perspective, um, mental performance and work performance exist in a positive feedback loop. Mental performance increases work performance and work performance increases mental performance. And that's a fundamental uh, insight when we look at how uh, older workers can be older learners and older learners can be older workers. Let me rephrase that, how older workers will be better older learners and older learners will be better older workers. Before I've mentioned that um, we need to look at different levels of organization when we look at how we can ask older workers to become older learners in order to become better older uh, workers. We pointed at the importance of employment policies at the macro level and uh, implications for training and learning at the micro level. When we look at employment policies there are a number of um, dimensions that we need to consider. Um, 
there is the temporal dim dimension and the spatial dimension. Um, how much time is spent working uh, and when is that time allocated? When we look at the spatial dimension, there are questions about where do people need to go uh, to work? Can they work from, uh, from home? So silver workers um, really prefer more flexible uh, working conditions. There is also a content related dimension. Uh, what we typically see is a shift towards training, a shift towards transfer of knowledge, a shift toward quality issues and quality control and so on. And there obviously is also a financial dimension to um, remaining active longer. Um, many countries still negatively sanction work beyond the traditional uh, age of retirement. Uh, either in terms of the tax bracket in which people uh, find themselves uh, or in terms of a negative effect on the pension they uh, receive after retirement. But more important when we ask ourselves the question how uh, older workers can participate in uh, formal learning as part of a strategy to keep um, their skills uh, up to date uh, are the implications uh, for training. In a rapidly changing knowledge society, the value of specialist knowledge and expertise depends on the ability to keep expertise current. And there are two aspects to that. The first one is the importance of certification. Um, and that's where the importance of formal education comes about. Formal education gives people the certification that even when an outside society, an outside world might doubt whether someone uh, at advanced age still has the potential to contribute meaningfully to uh, a knowledge society, that certification will sort of uh, prove uh, beyond doubt that that person actually was able to go through a learning process and prove his or her uh, expertise. A second aspect had to do, has to do with the importance of embedded learning. Uh, learning needs to be embedded in a larger uh, context and that's why formal and non-formal education are also uh, really important as part of the learning process of older workers. So the formal and the non-formal and the informal should really be combined in a learning process that um, keeps expertise current. We've talked about different types of intelligence and we've looked at uh, a number of the elements which are crucial, crucial to effective um, learning at an advanced age. And so there are a number of characteristics of performance and learning at advanced age that need to be considered. Because of the constraints of the system, um, new experiences should be constructed based on essentially crystallized intelligence. New information must be uh, presented against the background of patterns which silver workers constructed throughout their careers. So it's really important that the teachers um, refer to those patterns and help older learners to recognize them and to actively uh, use them as a background for their learning. Furthermore, appropriate teaching and learning strategies must be put in place to memorize new information and there's an important role for new media and ICT which needs to be uh, explored and actually uh, stimulated. Last but not least, as part of a formal uh, training program, there is uh, the option to train silver workers as trainers for younger workers. So to train older workers to be very explicit about the expertise they've built up over the years and again use that in two ways. First of all, use it for themselves as a background uh, against which they can upgrade uh, their own expertise, but also to use the patterns they recognize as input for uh, younger workers who, who do not as easily recognize those patterns. As a preliminary conclusion, the age-related decrease of fluid intelligence and the stable crystallized intelligence provide a background 
against which we need to look for teaching strategies and learning techniques that take the age of participants in formal education into consideration. Important in that are the role of new media and ICT and the training of silver specialists as trainers for younger workers. For employers we need to look at the creation of an environment in which all workers can build their individual learning biography, the, re the learning biography which is required for lifelong performance based on lifelong learning. Governments need to look at, legis at legislation which allows organization to develop tools to motivate their specialist workers to continue as silver specialist and to continue their formal education as part of that trajectory. Education providers need to create an environment for lifelong learning which starts before the traditional age of employment and continues beyond the traditional age of retirement. Um, and in that climate we need to include formal as well as informal and non-formal elements. Thank you.